Good morning and welcome. So nice to see you this Sunday morning. My name is Dana Corsello and I am the Canon Vicar of Washington National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Bishop Marian Buddy and of course all of my colleagues here, I want to welcome you and, and our Dean Randy Hollerwith. Today is a very special Sunday. The first Sunday of the month is always Military Recognition Sunday. And today we are, or the day, pardon me, is sponsored by AMVETS, which is the nation's most inclusive, congressionally chartered veteran service organization. And we have special guests today, Sherman Gillums. He is reading, he's their chief advocacy officer. He and his family are here today, and they will be at coffee hour to greet you all and to share more information about AMVETS. And what's really neat is we hope that AMVETS will partner with us. You know, every Memorial Day weekend we do Rolling Thunder, but this year it will be called, what's it called? I had it right here. What's it called, Michelle? Rolling to Remember. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we're excited about this partnership and you can meet them and learn more during coffee hour. And also, um, on a sadder note, Tatie Ratcliffe, one of our beloved congregational members, she died last fall and she, her ashes will be interred, interred in the Memorial Garden at two o'clock today. So those of you who knew Tatie, we'd love to have you join us today as we inter her in the Memorial Garden. So now let's gather ourselves on this Sunday morning I know many of you probably uh, raced to get here, so let's just be here and settle ourselves. And I think this goes for all of you who are watching online too. We're so happy that you're with us as well. Let's take a deep breath and allow the spirit to break into our hearts, minds, and souls on this day as we worship with one another and um, let the spirit wash over all of us. Again, thank you and welcome.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Praying together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple, so we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the holy of, to, as holy to the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your, savior, seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phineal, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. Holy God, open our ears to your call, open our eyes to your presence, open our hearts to your love. Amen.
There are a, are a lot of things that we have to wait for in life, from the mundane of everyday life, waiting for coffee to be brewed, to the more important moments, like the birth of a child. We are all waiting. We wait for blessings, for amusement, rewards. Sometimes we wait with patience. I don't fall in that category. At other times, not so much. And there are sayings which we have heard, good things come to those who wait. And some things are worth waiting for. If good things come to those who wait, is there anything you would be willing to wait your entire life for? It would have to be something really great, really good, yes? But there are things that are actually worth waiting for, like an encounter with Jesus, the Messiah. Today is a special day. And no, I'm not referring to Groundhog Day or Super Bowl Sunday. But each year on February 2nd, we celebrate the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ in the temple, 40 days after the celebration of his birth. The feast does not often fall on Sunday, so its observance varies based on local parishes and practices. But today, we have the gift of engaging this feast and the variety of meanings associated with it. So here we go. We're told in Luke's Gospel, when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Here we find the fusion or ancient mashup of required acts under the law of Moses, the law of the Lord. And Luke reminds us no less than four times that Joseph and Mary were faithfully observing the law described in Exodus and Numbers and Leviticus. According to the Jewish tradition, a woman who had given birth to a son would wait 40 days before going to the temple for a purification ritual. Combined with this, Luke's adds, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord dedicated for divine purpose. So Jesus was brought to the temple and presented to the Lord. The expectation was that a sacrificial offering had to be made in the temple. And being of humble means, Mary and Joseph offered a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons instead of the prescribed year old lamb. Now, it would not be unreasonable for us to wonder why Mary and Joseph would do this. They know that the baby Jesus is the Son of God. There is no need to present him to the temple. But the message is clear that they acted in obedience to the law of God through Moses. They went to the temple and they did what the law prescribed because they were faithful. Perhaps, though, there is another reason for the visit to the temple, and his name is Simeon. Our gospel tells us that Simeon, a man righteous and devout, was waiting for the consolation of Israel, literally waiting for the alleviation of grief and sorrow for his people. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. It is implied that Simeon was not a young man, but he had practiced the discipline of waiting for some time. What seems clear is that he had a deep relationship with God, nurtured over many years, and that he trusted the message and the power of the Holy Spirit. He waited eagerly for God to provide the promised one, the Savior. 
And then the time of waiting was over. When Joseph and Mary presented the baby Jesus in the temple, Simeon immediately recognized this humble child of Bethlehem as the fulfillment of all the messianic prophecies, the hopes and prayers of the people. God fulfills the prophecy of Malachi when Simeon identifies the child as the awaited Messiah. It's Simeon's words that are recorded for us in detail in the familiar words of the Nunc Dimittis, the song of Simeon, read or sung each day for evening prayer or even song. Simeon says, this salvation is for all peoples. That is for all the world, the whole world. And the light that Jesus gives will bring revelation to the Gentiles as well to the glory of Israel. Churches around the world today will celebrate Candlemas. As candles to be used throughout the year are blessed, followed by a procession in a darkened church to remind us of Simeon's words that Jesus is the light of the nations. But Simeon was not alone in recognizing the Lord's presence in the temple. At that moment, the prophet Anna, an 84-year-old widow who never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day, began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. In the Eastern Church, today is also known as the Feast of Meeting or Encounter because in the temple, Simeon and Anna met their Lord. It is the encounter between God who became a child to bring newness to our world and expected humanity represented in Simeon and Anna. But there's another encounter, one between younger Mary and Joseph and the elderly Simeon and Anna. The old receive from the young while the young draw upon the old. In the temple, Mary and Joseph find the roots of their people, their history. This is important because God's promises do not come to fulfillment merely in individuals all at one time, but within a community and throughout history. Mary and Joseph also find the roots of their faith, for faith is not something learned from a book but the art of living with God, learn from the experience of those who have gone before us. And for Simeon and Anna, nearing the end of their days, they received Jesus, who would be the meaning of their lives. Simeon waited in hope, not a fanciful hope, but a faithful hope. Hope in the God who keeps promises. Anna waited in hope. Day and night she worshiped God, fasting and praying, and then having seen the child Jesus, she gave thanks to God for a hope fulfilled. On this first Sunday in February, the first Sunday in Black History Month, I am reminded that the enslaved those who lived under segregation, legal discrimination, and Jim Crow waited in hope, much like Simeon, for the consolation, for the end of suffering and sorrow, and for the promise for the light to shine in what were some of the darkest times in our shared national life. Their waiting in hope, their faith, and their trust in God was not a passive thing. Waiting in hope required determination and perseverance, even through suffering. You see, waiting in hope is an active thing. And this has been the case for every significant gain that has taken place with regards to racial equality and opportunity in this country. Like the prophet Anna, I am reminded of other prophets of Dred Scott and Absalom Jones, of William Garrison, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and Alexander Crummel. 
Anna Julia Cooper, A. Philip Randolph, Medgar Evers, Thurgood Marshall, Pauli Murray, and the list goes on to those not remembered by monument or history book. They connect those of us of African descent to the roots of our people and the roots of our faith. So this month is a reminder that such history is not just an isolated group's history, but part of our shared national narrative. At this time in our country, when there is so much going on in our civic and political life that stands to divide us, our faith is important. We have work to be done, people to serve, structures to challenge and to change. There are still truths to be told. There are still people to heal and lives to change. On this feast of the presentation, there are people who still need to see the reality of God's presence in their lives. We recognize that God's kingdom still needs to be established as we seek justice and stability in our communities and in our nation. And how do we do this? How do we keep believing while living in a world which seems such a mess at times? How do we keep trusting in God when we see so much suffering and so much trouble, so much of what God does not want for us in our world? I know it is difficult when all around we see is darkness of conflict and violence, darkness of prejudice and hate, the darkness of cruelty as people fail to treat each other with respect. There will be times when we are tempted to think that God is not present, especially when change and justice seem slow in coming. But our faith, yes, our hope, rests in the knowledge that God is always acting and we prepare ourselves by deepening our relationship and our trust in the power of God. Let's take encouragement today from Simeon and Anna, who waited in hope, who trusted in God's promises, and whose faith prepared their hearts to recognize the Messiah in their midst and the power to proclaim him as the light to the Gentiles, the light of the world, and the light of our lives. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of Revelation, as we gather in praise for the gracious mystery of your Son, we remember the many needs of the church and the world. For the mission of the church, that we live as a light to the nations, send us out proclaiming your glory and service to all. God of life and light. For the leaders of nations, cities, and states, that they may serve with wisdom and courage and provide for the needs of all people. We pray especially for Donald, President of the United States, the Congress, the Supreme Court, and Muriel, Mayor of this city. In the Cathedral's weekly observance of prayers for the states, we hold before you the people and government of California. God of life and light, For those who are homebound and sick in our community, that our words and care for them may show your love and compassion. God of life and light. For the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, defend them with your heavenly grace and grant them a sense of your abiding presence, God of life and light. For those who mourn and grieve the loss of loved ones, that you would comfort and console them, God of life and light. For the departed and all the saints, united with us through our baptism into Christ, that we may be brought with them to your land of glory. God of life and light. Yes. God of all good things, we ask your Holy Spirit and your healing power upon all those in Wuhan and across our globe who are suffering from this virus. Bless and heal them. Watch over and protect all the healthcare workers who watch over them. Surround us by your love and guide us on the path of salvation, O God, that the radiance and power of thy Holy Spirit working in the world will bring together all peoples and nations to offer you worship and to proclaim your splendor. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. My name is Randy Hollerith, and I'm the Dean of Washington National Cathedral, and it's a pleasure to welcome all of you this morning. How many folks are visiting with us? How many folks are visiting the cathedral today? Welcome. Thank you for being with us. We are a house of prayer for all people, and you are always welcome here. Please know, and we hope that if you're visiting, that you'll come back and see us often. Today, um, as Dana uh, mentioned, is Military Recognition Sunday. So after folks receive communion today, as always, we will have healing ministers in St. John's Chapel, and you're invited to go in there. They'd be more than happy to pray with you. But we'll also have two chaplains in War Memorial Chapel who would be more than honored to pray with you and especially for veterans and their families or active military and their families. And they will also be um, in War Memorial Chapel for prayers following the service. So we hope that you will take advantage of that. We are always honored um, to have and to support our veterans and our active military servicemen and women. Please know that everyone is welcome and invited to receive communion today. It doesn't matter um, your church affiliation or your lack thereof. In our tradition, you put one hand on top of the other and a member of the clergy will put a piece of bread in your hand and then you can eat your piece of bread or you can take it and uh, dip it in the chalice if you prefer. Um, we have gluten-free bread for those who need it, so please don't hesitate to ask. If, if, you, if you'd rather not receive communion, I hope you'll still come forward when everyone else does and just cross your arms over your chest like this. That way we'll know and we'll just offer you a blessing. Um, I think uh, having a blessing is always a great thing. So I hope you'll, you'll take advantage of that and come forward. Finally, if you're able, I hope you will share some of God's blessings in your life with us here at the cathedral today. All the money that we raise for the care of this special place, as well as the mission and the music and the ministry, comes from private donation. So if you're able to support us, we'd be most grateful. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves we would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. 
bring us into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, that with our patrons, the apostles Peter and Paul, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
praying together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
in the light and peace of Christ. <laughs>